Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Bruce Ellis, and this is the Insider Report. So sit back, relax, and let your ears do the walking as I fill you in on what's going on in the area this weekend and beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. And, hey, we don't have Cat in the house, but, hey, we got the next best thing. We got her husband with us, Mr. Jason Liddell. How you doing, Jason? I'm fantastic, Bruce. Uh, Thanks for having me. Man, welcome to the uh, th- the uh, radio show here and everything. I know you've pinch hitted for me before with your wife, but, uh, yeah. yeah, this is the first time we've been able to hang out and everything. And I got to tell you, man, I know what you did this weekend, and you're going to talk about it, but I got to tell you, you being the Drosselmeyer, awesome. I played it. I did it in the movie, and I played it. It was the first character I ever played on stage, and yep. it was like, what did you think about the experience? I mean, we talked about it. We both had different takes on them mm-hmm. a little bit, but we've basically got the same just yeah, yeah, your show isn't long enough for me to talk about what an amazing experience oh, yes. that was. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, um, as you know, they do a annual Nutcracker every year, the mm-hmm. Wild Rivers Coast Foundation for Dance. And this year, Sky Marie invited me to play Drosselmeyer. Mm-hmm. And I went, you know what, Kat and I are each in production for our own show. And I'm in production for a show in Gold Beach. But sure, let's do Nutcracker too. And uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. But you're not doing those until later on. A little later, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I rehearsed with them a few times, worked with the kids. And then last week we did dress rehearsal and we started and we just closed it yesterday. And it was honestly one of the most fulfilling experiences I've had in performing art. It's a fun character. It really is. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had a blast doing yeah. it. Too. Not just yeah. the character, those kids. Oh, I no, that's funny. That, about, oh, yeah, yeah, the ballet. I, I, yeah. That's something I recently learned about myself is I love working with kids. Oh, no, kids are always good in the, uh, yeah. in the studio and everything. We've done it in the past. You and I have been in many productions together. Mm-hmm, and man. Kids, always kids around and stuff like that. It's very good. Very, very cool. Yeah, so it went well. It went super well. Yeah, Kat even stage managed too. And yeah. we had a lot of good smooth backstage, a good process. And because there's so many moving parts, uh-huh. so many changes in costume, there's a lot happening. I don't think anyone really understands how much is happening back there oh, behind yeah. Nutcracker. It's insane. Oh, yeah. Any kind of, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, the one thing about it, I kind of figured Kat was saying the same thing. The first thing came out your mouth, the same thing came out of my mouth when I said, I don't have to dance, do I? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. Yeah, and so it's don't. my first yeah. ballet experience, but I did not dance. No, no, I you don't have to. I did move rhythmically and with yes. fluid, and, 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 but I didn't dance. But if I do it next year, I'm going to see if they teach me a couple moves oh, and there I can you get go. in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's funny because I did the one where the guy makes the doll, you know, the mm-hmm. uh, uh, Capelica or whatever, the Capelica. Or the, yeah, something like that. It's the, uh, oh, now I can't remember the name of it, but Dr. Capellus was the dude and he created the doll, the living oh. doll. And they asked me to do that ballet at one of the ballet instructors here. And okay. I did that at the theater in Harbor, you know, gotcha. when it was yeah. down. And uh, I got on there and did it and everything. And she made me dance, though. <laughs> I had to dance with the doll and I went back and forth the stage. And when the production was all over, I looked at it and I go, I looked at the movie and I said, hey, he didn't have to dance in that movie. Why'd you make me dance? She says, because I knew you could. And I just went, okay, you got me there. All right. Go. Oh, so great. I did have to dance a little bit, but it, it was fun. It was yeah. cool playing those characters like that in ballets. I've been in like three ballets and everything like this that. This was my first, so, and I was, I was yeah. joking that my favorite thing about doing dance and ballet, no lines to memorize. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was off book the whole time. It's a mute thing, man. That's it, right? You don't have to memorize nothing. Just go, go improv all the mm-hmm. way around. Yeah, And like you said, working with the kids is always a blast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's cool. So that's what you did this weekend. You guys so, wrapped it up, and yeah, so, and, and you're getting ready. To let do me something. just say, two shows a day. Those kids are rock stars. Right, on. I was exhausted. I'm telling you, can't do that. Oh, they're all over the place, <laughs> man. And then you see them snoozing and relaxing in the yeah. back and everything. I know. Yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Good times. Good times. Oh, that's fun. Mm. Glad you were able to. Me too. To take the characters, like I said, I told Kat, I go, dang, I didn't even think about it. <laughs> Jason when Sky hit me up, and I got, I couldn't do it. I wasn't available. But I would have threw your name out there uh, right off the bat. So well, I'm, I'm glad, glad she. Got I'm glad I round about it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfect. Good deal. And we didn't do much this weekend. We hung out and it was cool and just watched football. It was on Saturday and Sunday but towards the playoffs. Well, so Junior's on Christmas was... break now, right? Yeah, and he's on yeah. Christmas break. Yeah, because you are too. Yep. yep, yep, yep. He's on Christmas break. So I got him hanging out and being cool. <laughs> That's us. So, and then Christmas coming up and all this. Oh, good yeah. Time. All the so, holidays. Yeah. So, well, hey, we don't have a guest. And that was, oh, that's cool, though, hearing about that. You know, I just like sharing that with the people, the Nutcracker. That's great. Good experience. So they're going to hit you back up next year, too. I that's hope great. so. Yeah, yes, I've already told Sky. Yeah, I, yeah, I would love to Yeah, be ready for back. it. Yeah, that's cool. Right on. Hey, all right. Well, so before we get going here, I'd like to thank Trike City Dispensary, Oregon South Coast Fishermen, otherwise known as the Castaways, Just the Jeweler, and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. And if you'd like to sponsor our show or one of the other fine shows here at KCIW, all you got to do is go to kciw.org, and you will be on your merry way. 
Hey, all right, brother, let's get down and get some music schedule going out here. All right, for the Misty Mountain Brewing Company on December 29th, Lon Goddard will be playing from 6 to 8 p.m. Yeah, and then at Tortuga Mexican Bar and Grill on the 22nd and the 29th, we got Jeeva, and he's playing from 6 to 8. Elk Valley Casino at the Betty Green Center, they got on the 23rd, Justin Shandor's coming, the Elvis Presley tribute, that's at 8. On the 30th, it's Cut It Like the Kings at 7. On the 31st, it's New Year's Eve with DJ Bobby Brown at 8. And then happening in the Boyer's Bar and Grill, music starts at 7 there. On the 22nd and the 23rd, we got Jesse Mead. And on the 29th and the 30th, we got Robert Tiernan. Disturbing the Peace is playing on December 31st, New Year's Eve, at the Chetco Brewing Company from 8 p.m. all the way till midnight. They're going to be disturbing the peace till midnight. <laughs> That's right. Hey, Danielle Duran has her open mic gig going on, and every Tuesday it's at the Oxen Free at 8 p.m., and every Thursday it's at Chetco Brewing 5 to 7. Jeevan is playing on December 22nd and December 29th at Tortuga Mexican Bar and Grill from 6 to 8 p.m. Yes, indeed. And the Mighty Steelheads will be playing on the 31st doing a New Year's Eve at Enoteca at 9 p.m. And then the Italian guys on December 30th at Kuntai at 6 p.m. Yep, and then Cisco and Daltrey on the 23rd and 30th. They'll be at the Brickets Harbor Farmer's Market 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And on the 27th, they'll be at the Checkco Activity Center 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And finally, the Bloodline Band is playing on December 22nd at the Checo Brewing Company at 6 p.m. Yes, indeed. Well, that was it for the music schedule. I'm still I'm be getting that together again next week. We'll have another full lineup again <laughs> for us all and everything. But yeah, it's starting to trickle down here for December. Del Norte Child Care Council at 212 K Street in Crescent City has a holiday open house on December 20th from 3.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Come join the DNCCC staff for an evening of family fun. You can meet Santa, play games, and go home with a holiday goodie bag full of fun surprises, so come and meet Santa. You can call at 707-464-8311. Hey, at Elk Valley Casino, as I said, they're presenting Justin Shandor, the Elvis Experience, but that'll be happening on the 23rd, coming up this weekend, 7 p.m. Justin brings Elvis Presley's iconic hits to life, from Jailhouse Rock to Can't Help Falling in Love. Doors open at 6 p.m., the show starts at 7, and the seating is first come, first served. And, of course, it's a casino, so you must be 21 or older to attend. Then we've got an ugly sweater party hosted by RXD Sound at the Lucky Pirate Chop House, which used to be Latitude 42, on December 23rd at 9 p.m. Have some fun. Show off your ugliest holiday sweaters. You know those are going to be coming up for sure. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Kat yeah. and I have a couple good ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The formerly Latitude 42, they're still doing the transition. Yep. Yep. Hey, the sign got up there first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Christmas tide pooling with Rosa Lahucci. Hey, this is happening at Split Stairs, 1880 South Pebble Beach Drive in Crescent City on the 23rd. I just don't have a time here. Well, there you go. Have you ever explored the beach at low tide and wondered yourself, what is that? Well, I wonder no more. Join Rosa Lahucci, marine biologist for the Talawa Dani Nation on the exploration of things tide pool on Christmas Eve. Learn history, science, Species identification and proper tide pool etiquette. Mm -hmm. Be on the lookout for sea anemones, nudibranches, and octopuses. And I'm sorry, I didn't get a time on the thing. I don't know why there wasn't a time on it. I didn't I, catch that. Yeah, either. I just just That's trying right. to reach so, out to Rosa if you can. Yeah, or yeah, yeah or hop on. Uh, you know where I found it was on the events calendar on Facebook. Gotcha. So go there, Perfect. you know, everybody, and then you might be able to figure out the time because I sure couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we have a coastline dance on Mondays and Wednesdays at the Brookings Elks Lodge. 11.30 a.m. to noon is for absolute beginners. Noon to 1 p.m. is for improving dancers. And 1 to 2 p.m. is for intermediate dancers. On Tuesday from 5 to 6 p.m. is for beginners. There's a 6 to 8 p.m. open dance with no teaching. You don't need to be a member, but there is a $1 four-member, $2 non-member donation. Thursday at the Crescent City Elks Lodge will be a noon to 1 p.m. beginners. 1 to 2 p.m. intermediate. For more info, call Gene at 541-251-8998. That's right. That's the one our buddy uh, Dave Keen, our fishing report guy, you know. The, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. our favorite castaway there. He, <laughs> okay, cool. Him and his wife do that. They go to that. After he tapes the show, he's always over nice. there having some fun. <laughs> All right, so uh, up next we have quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. Hey, that's right. And this week I got a few quotes from Mr. Walt Disney. He was born on the 5th of December, 1901. He says, all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. Laughter is timeless. Imagination has no age. Dreams are forever. He says, it's kind of fun to do the impossible. 
And then last but not least, he says, I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing, that it was all started by a mouse. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from Walt Disney with Cousin Bruce. Till next week, have a great one. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that last one. Yeah. Just remember, it's all started by a mouse. All right, Christmas Eve candlelight worship service on December 24th at 6 p.m. at the Grace Lutheran Church at 372 Meridian Street in Crescent City. Experience the joy of community, uplifting music, and a meaningful message. A perfect way to usher in the spirit of Christmas. You are invited to celebrate with them as they share the love and light of the season. Yes, indeed. You're going to be a lot of that going on too here. Yes. Hey, Nature's Coastal Holiday Festival of Lights is happening still. It started on the 24th of November and it's run until the 27th. So, yeah, it's actually getting close to the end there. So, it's running from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Sweets, treats, and entertainment. Hundreds of light sculptures. Millions of lights. Adults are $3. Kids under 12 years are free. Santa visits every Friday and Saturday from 6 to 8 p.m. And that, like I said, is going on until the 27th. And again, we have the Lucky Pirate, which used to be Latitude 42, a New Year's Eve party with RXD Sound on December 31st at 9 p.m., bringing the new year and some sick beats and amazing people. At least they said it, not amazing beats and sick people. So. <laughs> <laughs> Got that right. Elk Valley Casino, New Year's Eve, no limit. Hold them. Deep stack tournaments happening on the 31st. Sign-ups for the tournament begin at 4 in the poker room. Tournament play will begin at 6. Entries and re-entries will be allowed until the start of seventh round for this tournament. Paula Joe's Poker Room will be adding extra money to the prize pool. You must be 21 or older to participate. And now a PSA from the VFW. They're having a Legacy Bricks fundraiser. The VFW Post is raising money to fix its building, upgrade its heating, electricity, and improve its landscape. They have already raised approximately $30,000, but will need help with another $20,000 to complete the work. They're selling legacy bricks that will highlight the entrance of the building, featuring messages of memory to veterans respected by their loved ones. Each brick will cost the donor $100, and every purchased brick will be laid professionally in front of the post for everyone to observe. They will also conduct more yard sales, provide meals for a nominal donation, and sponsor other groups and their activities. Once the building is completed, the VFW Post 966 will serve the veterans and community of Brookings. They are active in the Brookings community, a member of the Chamber of Commerce, and a supporter of the Brookings City Council. They support our veterans, providing ceremonies, funerals, and memorials. The VFW Post 966 is a 501c19 nonprofit group with all members being veterans of foreign wars. Their national charter began in 1939. They have approximately 20 million members throughout the United States. Veterans Post 966 is located at 507 Pacific Avenue in Brookings. Yes, indeed. I'll drive by there. You can see stuff going on. They were doing the roof yesterday right when the I went by. Yeah, yeah, they're getting down. Hey, a Master Gardener program PSA here. Have you heard about the Master Gardener program? Well, Master Gardener volunteers offer garden service and it is grounded in science and is locally relevant. Registration is now open for the 2024 Curry County Master Gardener class. Oregon State University Extension Master Gardener volunteers are local community members that the public goes to for garden advice that is grounded in science anyone can become a master gardener volunteer you don't have to be an expert in gardening because the class will give you lots of resources and hands-on training the most important requirement is the willingness to volunteer to help our community with their sustainable gardening questions the class runs from january 12th through march 15th with a mix of online modules and in-person training followed by 40 hours of service learning volunteer activities completed by october 31st there is a charge for this, and when the 40 hours of volunteer type is completed, registration closes December 21st. So, yeah, it's getting close to closing. Register at www.beav.es slash QFU. Yeah, there you go. So, you want to register soon if you want to get involved in that stuff. And then the Mudslingers at Manly Art Center, located at 433 Oak Street in Brookings, announces their Artists of the Month, the Mudslingers, a group of potters and ceramic artists. The exhibit will be on display through December 30th. The rest of the exhibit features a variety of art created by the Manly Art Center members. Gallery hours are Tuesday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. For more information, call 541 469 1807 or visit manlyartcenter.com. The mudslingers. (laughs) 
And now it's time for a bit of weird history with Bushwhacker Bruce. Right. G'day, Jason. G'day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's bit of weird history. For your knowledge, pleasure. Did you know that the first gold discovered in America was in North Carolina by a farmer named Breed? It's true. And here's a story. John Reed was a Hessian soldier who left the British Army near the conclusion of the Revolutionary War and came to settle near fellow Germans living in the lower Piedmont of North Carolina. But most of the people dwelt on modest family-run farms in rural areas where they raised small grain crops such as corn and wheat. Well, the life of farmer John Reed would have been long forgotten had it not been for a chance event on Sunday in 1799. On that day, Reed's son Conrad found a large yellow rock in the Little Meadow Creek in the Reed Farm in Cabarrus County. This rock reportedly weighed 17 pounds and for three years was used as a doorstop at the Reed House. Then in 1802, a Fayetteville jeweler identified the golden nugget. He purchased it for the ass price of $3.50. The jeweler was a slick fellow for it was worth $3,500. Well, later John found out from a neighbor how much the gold really is really worth, and he was majorly disappointed at being taken by the jeweler, and he and his son spent many days searching for another gold rock. Well, they eventually found one, and that rock was a bit larger, and brought in over $6,000, which Mr. Reed collected. That's right, the following year, John Reed began the Reed mining operation by forming a partnership with three local men. The partners supplied equipment and engaged men to dig for the gold in the creek bed, and while Reed provided the land. Well, the returns to be divided equally. The men mined mainly in the off-season from farming, giving first priority to raising their crops. Well, before the end of the first year, an enslaved boy named Peter had unearthed a 28-pound nugget, which was the largest documented find in the United States. Well, Peter's nugget remains the largest gold nugget found at Reed Gold Mine, and the largest found east of the Mississippi River. Well, John Reed was a wealthy man when he died in 1845. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this week's bit of weird history with yours truly, Bushwhacker Bruce. Till next time, keep it real, but always keep it weird. Yeah, I found that it was fascinating because you know, where would you say if when you first found about a gold strike and everything, where where what state? Oh, you think in? California? Yeah, and then there's Georgia, I guess, was even before California. But, oh. but there's other states, you know, in the eighteen hundred, you know, eighteen hundreds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's seventeen, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. seventeen ninety nine. It was found in North Carolina. I mean, you can read about it, but you got to go looking it up. It's not something that sure. you, there wasn't a big. A boom, no, no a boom. big boom, no yeah. run. Yeah, right. yeah, on it. Yeah. But, See, I wonder what a twenty-eight pound gold rock would be oh worth today. <laughs> of gold. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That other one was six thousand then, so it'd be like yeah, wow. millions. I don't even know what it is worth now. Gold is, but that's ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> All right. Up next, we have game night at the Whimsical Griffin at six one five Checo Avenue by the Redwood Theater. Tuesdays and Fridays from five p.m. to nine p.m. They're playing Magic: The Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, and other board games. Yep, and then we got the Meals on Wheels. They're always looking for volunteers. Meals on Wheels are needed volunteer drivers. They deliver about 75 hot meals daily to seniors that can't get to the Check Care Activity Center for the daily meals served there. They have a harbor route and a brooking route, and this is a perfect opportunity for anyone out there that wants to give back to the community and be a friendly face to deliver a hot meal and a little kindness to our local seniors. Now, whether you're interested in doing a day, a week, or a month, all volunteers are welcome. Hey, if you're interested, you can contact Debbie Lutz at 714-423-9797. The Brookings Harbor Boy Scouts of America scouting for new troop members. Boys and girls are invited. Troop 32 is one of Oregon's oldest scout troops with a long history in the community. Troop 4032 is Brookings' first female scout troop founded in 2019 following the transition from the Boy Scouts of America to Scouts BSA, allowing girls to join and participate in scouting for the first time in history. Troop 32 and Troop 4032 are now accepting new scouts as well as adults interested in volunteering. Scouts are able to join the troops from 5th grade to age 17. Adults are able to volunteer as long as they are over 21 years old, are able to pass a background check, and willing to spend about an hour and a half completing a youth protection training course. They meet at the Scout Hall from 7 to 8.30 p.m. every Monday night, except for holidays. Come meet the troops and learn more about what Scouts can help you achieve. 
The Scout Hall is located at 414 Azalea Park Road in Brookings, Oregon. Troop 32 Scoutmaster Mark Haglin can be reached at 541-661-2749. And the Troop 4032 Scoutmaster Rebecca Wilson can be reached at 707-951-3647. Yes, indeedy. Keep them live and going, kicking. That's for sure. It's good. I'm glad to see them out there, too, and everything. It looks like they're getting some more members on board. So That's awesome. I'm liking it. Yeah. Well, I want them to be around when Junior gets of age, for crying <laughs> out loud. Yeah. Hey, the Del Norte County Courthouse Artists of the Month, Tanaka's Art and Public Places Program. They have art going down there at the courthouse. It's located at 458 Street in Crescent City. It's open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekends, except for state holidays. Yeah. Now we have Fog and Fine Art Gallery located in Wright's Custom Framing and Art Supply at 810 Checo Avenue in Brookings. The gallery features 36 local artists in a variety of mediums and a classroom to inspire new and seasoned artists with workshops. Stop by and enjoy all that's new in the gallery, open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday. For more information on class offerings, painting demonstrations, and artists, Call 541-469-7900 or visit them on Facebook at Wright's Custom Framing. Yes, indeed. Hey, and then the Brookings MS Self-Help Support Group conversation and support for people living with MS, uh, multiple sclerosis. Join others living with MS to talk, share experiences of successfully living and coping daily with MS. Share information and resources in a positive atmosphere. Topics will focus on areas of interest to the group members. This group is for people with MS, family, friends, and caregivers. Please reach out prior to attending with an email to AudreyMS18 at AOL.com. You can find them on Facebook, the MS Walk and Rollers. Meetings will be on the second Tuesday of the month at 11 a.m. at Chetco Community Library Annex Building, right across the street from the library at 402 Alder Street in Brookings. And now the Community Kitchen Schedule. Mondays at St. Timothy's from 11 to 12, there's brunch. Tuesdays at St. Tim's from 12 to 1. Wednesdays at Star of the Sea Catholic Church from 12 to 1. Thursdays at the Presbyterian Church from 12 to 1. Fridays at the Lutheran Church from 12 to 1. The first, third, and fifth Saturdays at St. Tim's from 12 to 1. The second and fourth Saturdays at the Church of the Nazarene from 12 to 1. And Sundays at St. Timothy's from 3 to 4. You can also find the Community Kitchen Schedule at kciw.org in the Community section of the website. Yeah, and you know what? That's it. We ran out of material here and everything. We still got a few minutes left. So um, what are you and Kat doing for Christmas here coming up here? It's Christmas this Not next weekend. Not much. Um, yeah. We've got Kat's families here and we'll probably do a little. Oh, no, that's right. We are volunteering with Nature's Coastal Holidays. So Christmas Eve, we'll be doing admission at the light show. Oh, you'll be at the light show? Yeah, All we're right. going to be helping out volunteering at the light show. Right on. And then right just some on. family stuff probably Very on cool. Christmas. but. We don't get like a tree or anything because we uh-huh. have a cat and she loves to eat the tree. So. Oh, really? So you can't have a tree around? We don't, no. Must... We have our, our bookshelf. It's got like all of our scripts and our theater stuff and uh-huh. I strung up lights along the bookshelf. Oh, and so okay. it makes sense for people in the performing arts and a librarian to decorate a bookshelf, yeah. not a tree. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think we found a new tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's What great. about you guys? Make lights on the wall. <laughs> Yeah, we were able to have a tree. Uh, yeah, at Beth's house, her uh, dogs don't mess with the tree. And in That's fact, good. they lay underneath it. They like it. You know, it's kind of cool. We can't, we're not putting the presents under there until Christmas <laughs> Eve because I don't want them like, you know, oh, hey, hiking, mm-hmm. a little, doing a little hiking going there on the, yeah. Um, yeah, on the presents. But yeah, we got the tree going on there. We'll be at Beth's doing that. And got a couple friends coming over and hanging out and everything like that. So yeah, just have a regular little Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, it's, it's cool, man. I had a good Thanksgiving and everything like that. The holidays, you know, junior you know, me and him. Well, December 14th, you saw it on there, was the anniversary of when my daughter passed away mm-hmm. in 2020. So she's been gone three years and everything like that now. So yeah, yeah. very sad. But you know, yeah. it's funny because you and I go, I mean, she was in the productions with us when I brought her up here and everything. She got right on the stage. Yeah, we were around when we, she moved here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you did, we did productions mm-hmm. and everything. We got to hang out a lot. Yeah. You knew, the yeah. You knew Mariah well the whole, yeah. in the theater. We did lots of stuff together. And I just yeah. had a memory pop up just a couple weeks uh-huh, ago. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody else was mentioning that too. Yeah. So it's like, you know what? She lives on, man, with us, you know, and everything like that. Yeah. Definitely. And, uh, yeah. It was pretty sad. But I, I just got to thinking about the theater. And then, like I said, it's kind of like, yeah. And why does it feel like lifetimes ago? I know, it, it seems like it's only like three years ago, yeah, and everything like that. But you know, the first couple of years there, um, this is the first year I'm able to actually give Junior like the family thing since his mom's been gone, you mm-hmm. know, and everything. Because me and him, just the last couple of years, we just hung out at home, you know, I put up a little tree, made a little tree yeah. and had everything like that. We did it, you know, and 
he woke up and the presents were there and boom, everything was cool. But it wasn't oh. the it wasn't the family atmosphere sure, thing. Yeah. And so I'm looking forward to getting some of that in this year and everything, uh, which we are doing, you know, and everything. Beth's been really great about uh, uh, doing that with us, helping me with him. And yeah. he's digging, he's digging the love. Let's put it that way. Yeah, cool. yeah, it's cool. It's Is school great. going good? Hey, school's going good. Yeah. Awesome. I got, he's I get, in third grade? Uh, yeah, he's in nice. third grade. He just did a, uh, you know, had a meeting with the teacher type thing that they do. And yeah, they, yeah. He's just, they, they, they dig him. You know, all the teachers so far are really dug him. He's like really good. I don't know why he behaves himself there or what <laughs> turns him loose at home, but yeah, he, he behaves himself in the right places. Let's put it that Honestly, way. Honestly, kids bugger. are so weird because, so I work at the middle school uh -huh. as an, an instructional aide, and sometimes the kids will listen to me. Most of the time I get ignored. If I see a kid out at the store, they want to say hi and have a conversation with me, and I'm like, come on, give me this respect <laughs> in the classroom. Yeah, let's do this in class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. But that's... They're forced. It's like a serious thing. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Junior still thinks that school is prison. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. But I said this is when you're supposed to enjoy it. Later on, <laughs> it'll be more. You know, it'll be a little harder, and then you might have a reason for you know either digging it more. Yeah. Maybe he'll like it more when he when it gets harder. The harder it gets. But I was like, this are these are the cool years, dude. You know, like, Dang, <laughs> yeah. this is where you're supposed to just enjoy it. You know, yeah. fly through and learn how to read and stuff, which is doing good. Oh, that's to, cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm digging that. Yeah, he's starting to read things. Hey, Bobble, what's this word? And I make him spell oh. it to me. And then I'll tell him what it is, or he'll guess it after he spells it. So that's working out. Yeah, good. yeah. So, hey, we managed to do it. Well, you know what? Before we get going here, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Hope you have a great one. And before we leave, we'd like to say, please support local businesses. Remember to shop local. And now it's time to close out this week's show. Before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to our fearless producer, Brother Tom, for all his great work making us look and sound good on the radio. I want to thank you all for tuning in to this week's Insider Report. Please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows that they have to offer. You can also catch all the fantastic show podcasts, including the Insider Report, at KCIW.org. And while you're there, hey, check out that live streaming as well. That means you can catch it anywhere. I dig mm. it. We're, we're so far advanced. Mm. So cool. I dig <laughs> Hey, until next week, this is Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Jason Liddell. That's right. We're signing off. And keep it real and spread the love and the peace every chance you get. And hey, we'll see you out there. Bam! Bam. Yeah! Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.